Hi, my name is Josh here at UITV. Today the topic is rather simple in concept, however it's important to pay respect to it, as it is crucial for every app you build. That topic is input handling and abstraction for a cross-platform codebase. Now I thought it was kind of funny that I would just have the opening intro here in the app. So basically I just want to kind of get right into it. Um, it's not too complicated, but I just want to explore some of the concepts that we use uh, within the UI engine to basically handle input cross-platform. This one, of course, being my Mac desktop, and this is the desktop app, as you can see here. Uh, you can kind of see my stuff recording in the background, but that's okay. And we got a little button here that is actually clickable, focusable by um, the keyboard or a remote control. Um, it's also touchable. So we're gonna explore kind of how all that works. Now, at a baseline, of course, the best place to start is the documentation. So if you want to kind of get into some more details and depth of what we offer on, on the uh, kind of input and focus management and all that kind of abstraction handling, um, that's all on the documentation. So you can check out the focus manager for learning about focusing on 10 foot platforms um, or also the input module, which is quite important too because this will allow you to gain access to things like the ps4 uh, x y and, and whatever other buttons O, and you know what i mean so if i go over here and i'll take a look at another documentation you have the input.js and this includes every single piece of input that we support for all of the platforms so we support absolutely everything um, there's no extra work for you guys to hook that up um, it's just already good to go so with that out of the way, again, check out the documentation for more details, including the input module. Um, but let's just get right into it. So here we have a simple uh, sample app. Um, it's just very, very bare bones. There's nothing in it at all other than a view and some text and a button. And that was the kind of starting point. Um, but what we're going to do is explore um, a little bit of After Effects today. And um, take a look at how imports work on cross-platform. Um, so we'll start off by making a new screen. Um, again, if you've seen some of the other videos, we use After Effects as our design tool. We have a plugin suite with After Effects that allows us to create uh, full user experiences and designs within After Effects. Um, the designers can do anything that they want, save it and then export it and it can be rendered in the engine on every platform that we support. So a very, very powerful tool. So you'll see some of this today actually. Um, so we're going to start off, we're going to make a new screen. It's going to be called uh, main. Um, it's just got a standard kind of 10 foot view. So 1920 by 1080, doesn't really matter. Background color right now doesn't matter either. So we'll just click OK. So we got nothing here to start. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what that'll look like in our engine. So under composition, we can take a look and preview basically this screen. So when I click on that, the engine will launch um, and then we'll have a preview. Of course, there's nothing, so you'll see nothing. There's a couple, couple helpful commands to switch between background colors and other test items. But let's start adding some buttons because that's kind of the key topic today. So first, let's add a push button. We'll do a single push button. Um, over here in our library panel, again, part of our plugins, um, you can click on push button and then add it. This is kind of a very easy baseline templated button. Um, it's just used for quickly making user interfaces and actually very useful for developers like myself. Um, this way I can make a user interface um, that is fully ready for code before designs even happen. And then I can pass that design back off to the, the design team so that they can polish it. Um, so we got a simple button here. Um, let's give that actually a test. That's a good baseline. So we'll do again, we'll preview, uh, we'll preview the composition main and we'll take a look at what there is. You can see the button actually, it's barely behind there. I'll change the background color so we can see it. Now we have a simple button that because we're on OSX, it actually handles every input that we support. Um, I guess minus touch, because if I touch my screen, nothing's gonna happen, but we have a hover state. So if you were on a desktop like this that has a mouse that can hover over things, you can hover over this button. You can of course click it. Um, you can of course touch it, but we're, we're gonna explore that later when we uh, export it to an ex uh, a touchable platform. Um, and then finally, you can also focus to it. So I'll use the arrow keys here. And obviously we only have one thing to focus on, so it'll be the only thing that grabs my focus, but I'm currently selected on it with the arrow keys and I can press enter um, to select it. 
there's a better way to visualize that and i'll show that in our next test so let's add a couple more buttons just so we can see what's going on so i'm just going to duplicate this these buttons a few times we'll kind of just stick them like this just so that they're not in like a straight line hierarchy um, and this is where the 10 foot focus manager really starts to kick in so we're going to preview this again we have a couple more buttons here um, and as you can see they're all also ready to go highlightable touchable as as we were exploring before um, but what we can do is take a look at how they focus so within our engine there's a developer panel um, you can open it by triple tapping on the top left corner pressing the play button three times in a row um, on on a remote or if you don't have a play button play pause button then what you can do is enter a konami code that's all in our docs as well um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open the focus debugger, which is part of our tools here, and it'll show information on where focus is currently and where it's expected to go and what its focus route is, because there's also focus hierarchies involved. Um, but as you can see here, we have um, the main first button there focused and on the bottom right, you can see the details on where it's expecting to go, right? So focusing right or pressing the right button will go to the next push button and likely also because it's right and down you can both use right or down to get there and similarly up and left will work to go back um, so without doing any work at all this is already completely functional um, and ready for a 10 foot a 10 foot remote um, so you know the test is not going to be that complicated i'll probably keep it just at this for this kind of tutorial um, but what we're going to do is we'll just add a couple more buttons just kind of all over just so we can test it on a on a couple platforms um, i'm going to save that we're going to save that into our um, project that we had already open so i'll do save as i'm going to find my project here in my development uh, do, do, do UI AE. So we're going to save that in the AE folder and we're just going to call it input test. Save. Um, and I also just want to modify a couple of things. So I'm just going to give a background color here so we don't have to set it because that's a bit of a pain. So let's just do that now. So on the properties panel, I can select my main composition and give it a couple properties. And what I want to do is call it instead of just a regular container, I'm going to call it a decorated container. And we'll just give it a background color of a hex value of a dark gray. So that should work. And then we're also going to modify the push button um, just so it has some text so we can see as well. So we'll just do press me. That'll be our default text for the push button. Push button. We'll give that a little test. Again, preview composition. There we go. So every button now says press me and we have a nice kind of gray background so we don't have to be setting that every time. Um, as you can see, the focus again is just working by default right out of the box. And we can also click on all of them and hover them. And we'll be exploring touch next. So again, let's save that. And the next step after saving is to export it. So we will export this composition. This again is that export process to bring all of that data that the designers made, or in this case, me, the developer. I'll bring all that data straight into my application so I can test it on many platforms. So what we're gonna do is first test it in this kind of testing app that we started already. Um, so we're gonna do basically a linking of the composition. So we don't need any of this code. Um, but we're going to get rid of all of those kind of React Native things. And we're going to use a tag that is internal to our engine called composition. Um, and what that allows us to do is reference a composition from After Effects. So pretty simple concept. Um, so instead of building a view and giving it styles and JSX and handling all of that, um, we basically just say, go find this, this uh, composition that is done. Um, within After Effects by Designer. And then we give it a source, uh, and the source is gonna be um, the name of the composition. So we did, I believe it was input test. Yes, input test was the file name, sorry. And the composition name was main. Um, so with that, we should actually should be good to go. The, the code is saved. We'll have to do a rebuild to get our uh, new assets into the app. And there we go. Pretty much instantly I have a cross-platform app, this platform, of course, being OSX, uh, now imported with our uh, design that we just did in After Effects. You can see some de de debugging information there at the top, um, the engine version at the bottom right, and then, of course, we have, you know, the uh, 
the, the debug panel with uh, the focus manager and all that kind of stuff that we were exploring earlier. Um, so this is ready for, well, talking about input abstractions. So the engine handles all of this stuff right out of the box um, so that you can write abstracted code and abstracted concepts and views and buttons and list items and all of these like really good architecture pieces to abstract out um, your interface so that you're not doing extra work per platform or per concept. Um, typically, we like to think about design, of course, as being in three major buckets, mobile, tablet, and 10-foot. Um, so we won't have necessarily the same design on all of those platforms. Like this design won't work for a mobile. You'll see it's not going to look that great because we don't have any scaling kind of set up, um, but it'll be functional for our, for our kind of use case. But where it kind of really plays into the time savings and the abstractions and really having that solid single code base experience is when you want to abstract out um, different views and different buttons um, where you can make a single view that will run and will take inputs from every platform, uh, including desktop, including mobile with touch and including 10 foot with focus. Um, so what we're going to do now is just very simply get this on a few more platforms and see what it looks like just to kind of prove out that concept. Um, so what I'm going to do over here, I have a, a four-way splitter. Um, I'm going to toggle the four-way splitter. And then that'll basically enable us to see a few more platforms. So what I have on the top right over there is the um, iPad. So that's just an iPad kind of streaming in through an Apple TV. Um, on the bottom right, I have my, uh, my Android phone, um, another touch device. And then of course we have the Roku, uh, which is on the bottom left there. Uh, so we're gonna basically export what we've just built for all of those platforms. So I realize the text is gonna be a little bit small there on the top left. Um, but it's not that important to pay attention to. It's just more of the concept of us doing this kind of together. So I'm going to do the first one here. Um, this will be the Android device. So I'm just going to run a command um, from our CLI that is basically a generate, uh, build, and a uh, install for the Android platform. So this command, the single command, will generate your, your Gradle project, then it'll build your Gradle project, and then it'll take the APK and install it onto, in this case, my phone. Um, so all of that's happening right now. And that'll include, of course, our design that we've just done. Um, so maybe in, in Harmony, we can do another one as well. Actually, I'll just wait for that one to be done. So we can kind of talk about it one by one. So after that, you'll see, of course, the um, the touch device, one of the first ones. Um, the layout is going to look a little weird, um, mainly because we have no scaling rules. Um, you can see there that there's the buttons are a little bit squashed, but it's again, we have no scaling rules. So it's just taking our our uh, 1080p basically screen and squashing it down to the form factor of my phone here, which is like 16 by nine tall. Um, but you can see I've done no work. You've, you've seen all the work I've done and, and it's already ready to go with full push events. Um, all of this code will be hooked up, you know, through the same events, uh, either on press or, um, you know, on long press or on short press or on release. Um, all of them go through the same function calls. So you can really think of some crazy architecture to uh, basically have a single source of button handling or maybe a single source of list items that handle different things, but be consistently abstracted on every single platform so you don't have to do extra work. Um, so that's one platform down. Let's do another one here, which will be the iOS device. So again, this will generate a Xcode project. It'll build that Xcode project and then it's going to install stream it over to my iPad, which is plugged in through, uh, through a USB connector. And so the build's done now and we're just getting it to launch and it should be uh, the exact same, of course. Um, so again, that single kind of code base approach. Um, now we're running on Apple and Android, same code base. And you can see here also again, the touch device uh, being completely ready to go. This one obviously looking a little bit nicer than the Android one because it's not as squashed, um, but like the other platforms, you can triple tap on the corner, also get the dev panel. Um, and get some more information there as needed. Um, but that's the, la like the, the next platform. And then the final platform, of course, being the Roku. Uh, we'll explore that one now. Just gonna kind of quit that process. I'll just start it back up so we can have it. Um, and then the final one here being uh, Roku. So with Roku, it's already kind of ready to go. 
we're just going to do a quick build so i'll do the build here of the roku the roku is using our cloud solution so again if you want to kind of dig into what that means um, you can go visit our documentation the short answer is that we take the uh, ability of basically building a scene tree and instead of building the scene tree um, on the device we build it in the cloud and then send it down to the roku to be rendered so that build's done and then we'll just run it so we're going to be running our engine that is going to be generating the scene trees and then that's done and we'll also just start the app there and then i'm going to open up this one as well so on the roku on the bottom left there we have also input completely handled ready to go i'm using my roku remote here of course you can't see it but i'm using it to navigate this and we also have touch on all the other ones and finally because we're also on desktop here we have the ability to use the keyboard uh, we have the ability to touch um, and also to hover over like it was a um, of course a desktop app like we are in this case so within a matter of minutes we have four platforms that are running um, you know inputs are done and we haven't done any extra code to, to do it because the engine just handles it um, so that's how we handle input abstractions um, if you have any other questions feel free to reach out to us um, and we can definitely dig into um, the topics that you'd like to see next thanks